Welcome to video number three on probability for actuarial exam one, also called exam P, P standing for probability. You can see in this video we're building off what we did in the first two videos where we used Venn diagrams to help us solve a problem that continues in this video. However, look at the question itself. It's not applied, a purely abstract symbolic question. So that does show up on actuarial exam one. We need to be able to understand how to deal with such symbolism. Okay. So the uh, question can be described as using a Venn diagram with two events here, A and B, to solve this problem that is stated purely with set notation and probability notation. Sets or events are what A and B represent. Sets are collections of things. Events are things that can happen. You can merge the two ideas. I haven't really talked about that yet. You see in here the union of two sets. A union B, this U-looking symbol, stands for union, where you're combining the two sets into one bigger set. An element or an outcome in the union is in one or the other or both. Uh, you also see a B prime notation here. That stands for what's called the complement of B. As a set, it's everything that's not inside of B. And as an event, it means that B has not occurred. So A union B prime means either A has occurred or B has not occurred, or both of those conditions, A occurring and B not occurring at the same time. We're given... Um, the values of these probabilities. The P here represents probability. It's kind of like function, function notation. P is like the function name. A union B here is like the input. You're saying the probability of A or B or both occurring equals 0.7. This is the output of the function. Same kind of thing here. The probability of A or not B occurring or both is equal to 0.9. We want to calculate this, the probability of A occurring. It is important to use the notation correctly, okay? I emphasize this with my students. If they don't use the notation correctly, it means they really don't understand what's going on. Square brackets, that's optional. Sometimes people use parentheses instead of square brackets. I will more commonly default to square brackets. All right, I want to take this uh, problem uh, in stages here. I want to solve it as quickly as possible first. All right. Then we'll be more systematic, just in case you're feeling like you couldn't, in the pressure of an exam, solve it as quickly as I did. We'll be more systematic about it. Then we do want to take a step back and really understand the notation carefully, and also talk, talk about something called the addition rule for mutually exclusive or disjoint events. And finally, at the end, they'll show Mathematica again, not just to make a picture, but this time to actually make an animation to illustrate something about this particular problem. All right, so let's make the Venn diagram to start with. So make a box <clears throat> representing, well, you could call this the sample space, S. So S here represents the whole box. It represents everything that could happen in some random experiment that this is referring to in real life. And you've got two circles in this case because of two events labeled with an A and a B. So A represents this entire circle and B represents this entire circle, and since you're not told otherwise, you should assume these could overlap. You should assume their intersection, which we talked about in video number two, is non-empty, okay? Unless you're told otherwise, unless you're told that the events, A and B, are disjoint, is a word to look for, or mutually exclusive. In that case, you could draw them without overlap, but in general, you want to draw them with overlap. Okay, here I'm going to now solve it the very quick way, okay? Um, you got to think visually though, and this is the hardest part. I will, we'll be more careful here in a minute. A union B prime means everything in A together with everything outside of B. Okay, that's a probability of 0.9 or 90 percent, 90 percent of the total probability of 100 percent. So if everything in A combined with everything out there is 90 percent, that leaves 10 percent, 100 minus 90 for this crescent shape in here. That's inside B, but not inside A. And if that's 10%, and this is true, that the probability of A or B or both occurring is 70%, this being 10% would mean this has to be 60%. 70 minus 10%. 70% minus 10% is 60%. And that's the answer to the question. The answer is 60%, 0 .660, which happens to be answer D, on the sample exam, okay? Did you catch that? You can solve this pretty quickly 
with the help of this diagram, by thinking carefully to understand what the notation means. Again, I'll, I'll do it again real quick. Think of the sample space itself as having probability 1 or 100%. A union B prime again is everything in A, including also everything outside of B. So the only thing that's not included is this crescent shape. That's 90% of the probability, leaving 10% there. But A union B is 70% of the probability, so if you've got 10% here, you're left with 60% over there. This is 0.6. Okay, let's be a bit more systematic about things. Let me color these regions with some different colors. I'll color this crescent with red. That would represent A take away B. It's called a set minus, in fact. You could also think of it as A intersected with um, B prime, the complement of B. I'll color A intersect B, what they have in common, there in the middle, with green. I'll color this crescent over here, B take away A, with blue. And then I'll color the outside of the circles here with purple, and I think I'll do the slashes in the opposite direction. It's a little hard to tell the difference between the blue and the purple sometimes, especially if you're drawing them small. All right, each of these different four different regions could be labeled using set notation. Uh, for example, what's in red? Well, okay, let's let's focus on the what the unions represent here with these colors here. So A union B. What does that equal? That's A and B combined, everything in A or B or both, red, green, and blue. I'll write it like this, red plus, I won't worry about the color of the plus signs, plus green plus blue. Okay, that's A union B. What about A union B prime? Everything in A or everything in B prime, or both. A consists of the red and green. B, B prime consists of the red and purple. Being in one or or the other or both means you're in red or green or purple. This would be red plus green plus purple. This is actually a very very coincident coincidental uh, thing going on here. Just yesterday, just yesterday. I ran across the um, the guy who is a math professor who calls his YouTube channel was something like Red Pen Black Pen or something, and he was really good at switching between his Red Pen and Black Pen. Uh, he was doing a hundred integrals in less than six hours to try to get a world record. Very impressive. But more impressive than doing the integrals was how well he switched between the Red Pen and the Black Pen, or the Blue Pen, or whatever it was. I just came across that yesterday. Give a shout out if, if you've seen his channel before. Anyway, um, so that helps us think about what those are. Um, and let's also use some algebra here. Go back to my black pen now here. That's not a marker. Let's label these four different regions with letters representing the probabilities to make the notation a little simpler. Let's call this one, say, W. That's a W there. This one, X. This one, Y. And what's outside of all those with a Z? Can you see those? W, X, Y, Z. Okay? And let's write down a system of algebra equations we know based on these givens and based on the fact that the entire probability is 1 or 100%. We can write down the fact that W plus X plus Y plus Z is 1. We can also say based on this fact here, what's A union B prime, it's the red, the green, and the purple, that W plus X plus Z equals 0.9. You can see right away that implies Y is 0.1. And then we have this fact here, 0.7, the red, green, and blue, W plus X plus Y must equal 0.7. We know y is 0.1, plug that in there, we get that w plus x must be 0.6, and that is the answer to the question. w plus x 
makes up A, the red and the green make up A, probability of that is 0.6 because W plus X is 0.6. Um, so now I want to show you a couple other things. Again, I want to show you how to think about this more systematically and more in a more complicated way using this kind of notation and introducing something called the addition rule for disjoint events or mutually exclusive events. And then we do the Mathematica thing. What I'm about to show you is pretty complicated. Um, here it is. Here's a formulaic presentation of the solution based on the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. We have the following representations of the sets that are in the diagram as disjoint or mutually exclusive unions meaning combined sets that don't have overlap. And we have corresponding probability facts that come from this, from this addition rule. When you've got two sets that don't have any overlap and you find the probability of the union, it is the sum. That's the probability of the first plus the probability of the second, which is essentially what I've got over here. So the fact, first of all, that S, the entire sample space, the entire box, is made up of a disjoint union of these four sets uh, this one here, A intersect B, B, is the green one. This one here, A intersect B prime, is the red one. A prime intersect B is blue. And A prime intersect B prime is purple. That leads to the equation 1 equals the probability of the entire sample space. Something's got to happen. Which, by this addition rule for mutually exclusive events, is the sum of these four probabilities of each thing individually. Essentially, that's the fact that I have right here. W plus X plus Y plus Z equals 1. Then A union B prime, that is uh, red, green, and purple altogether, can be written as a disjoint union of three disjoint sets, mutually, mutually exclusive sets, which leads to this equation. We're given that this is 0.9, and that, therefore, is this sum. 1 and 2 together, if you compare these two things, imply that this probability, which is right there, and doesn't show up in the second equation, must be 1 minus 0 0.9 or 0 0.1. Okay? The, um, the blue was 10%. A union B is what's red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. That was, had a probability equal to 0.7. We once again use this addition rule for mutually exclusive events to say this is true. We want to find the probability of A occurring, and you could write A as a disjoint union of these two sets. Therefore, the probability of A is the sum of these two things. Uh, this quantity, is, again, is point, um, what was that? That was 0.1. Uh, that can be plugged in here to get 0.1 right there. You know this is 0.7. Therefore, this sum, which is what we want, is 0.6, because 0.6 plus 0.1 equals 0.7. Okay, and that's what I see down here. We're going to go into the Mathematica now to finish off the video. Let me just say before we see the Mathematica that in this system of algebra equations, if you think about it, it's not possible to know what w and x are. w and x could be lots of different things between 0 and 0.6. They do have to be positive or greater than or equal to 0, but they... Um, it's not clear what they are. They can be anything, and that's going to come out in the Mathematica video that I show you here. It's not a literal video that you'll be watching, but it's code that makes an animation. Here is the code. Um, if you want to pause the video to take a picture of that code, and here is what its output looks like. And so you see, as in video number two, that I'm now representing the sample space the Venn diagram as a black square instead of a rectangle. Um, think of, and I made it so that it's the unit square, its area is one. Uh, the red uh, rectangle right here represents the set A. The coloring scheme here is a little different than what I did by hand. Uh, that represents the set A, which I drew as a circle on the Venn diagram. And the blue one represents the event B which again is a circle and is not quite consistent with the coloring that I did by hand. What they have in common is what's between here and here. Once again, we are given that Z plus W plus X is 0.9. What's over here between um, X is 0 and X is 0.9 here represents, what was that? That's um, 
A union B prime. Yes, that's right, because A is what's in red and B is what's in blue. A union B prime, and that probability is 0.9. W plus X plus Y is 0.7. That represents A union B, what's in red or blue over here. That's 0.7. Um, we can figure out that Y over here, which is in B but not in A, this wedge here is has an area of 0.1. And therefore, we can also figure out that, out that this area is 0.3 if we like, though that's not necessary as far as solving the problem. Um, we ultimately can figure out that what's in the red rectangle here, which represents A itself, is 0.6. W plus X is 0.6. The boundary, again, um, can be anything here. The values of W and X are unknown. They can be anything between 0 and 0.6, but they do have to add up to 0.6. Okay, so I made an animation like this. You can also open this up to see the value of the boundary of that dash blue line here as I move the slider. Thanks for watching.